Hey guys, so welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to give you a quick introduction to the new Material 3 Expressive theme. Because chances are, this topic already popped up somewhere around you, but you did not yet have the time to look into what this is really all about. Because let's be honest, in the Android and Google world, things change so frequently, not all the changes are worth looking into in detail. So here, my goal with this video is really to just condense the most important information about Material 3 Expressive into this video, so that after watching this video, you know whether it makes sense to dig a bit further into it or not. And if that is something you want to dig further into, then also let me know in the comments if you want me to make dedicated videos about these, for example, new UI components from Material Design that I will showcase in this video. So what is Material 3 or M3 Expressive? In the end, we know Material Design, that is the default design system from Google that we also use in Android apps, in Kotlin multi-platform apps, in general, just in Jetpack Compose. And that is what brings us all these default looking UI components like button, icon button, text fields and so on and that was already there and that is what material 3 is really all about it's just the third version of the material design component and such a design system not only brings components but it in the end defines the entire logic around these components so how a certain component should be used which specific spacings there are how usability principles are stick to how text styles look like which text styles there are which different types of colors there are and which color and which textile is used for which component, where and how. So this was already there. Material 3 Expressive is now an extension of this existing Material 3 theme. So it's not something completely different, like Material 4 or so, that doesn't yet exist. But it brings quite some new cool changes here that give your app a more Android 16-like look. Because here on the Material 3 Expressive website, we can see design with emotion. That is really what all these changes here are about. In the end, the core change this brings is to just give your entire material UI a bit more motion, a bit more movement to make it feel more alive to the users. Because just like in videos, motion and animations can increase the viewer's retention, the same is true for mobile apps. And in the end, M3 Expressive here extends the original and Material 3 theme in four different parts. On the one hand, as you can see, it brings a completely new physics and motion system. This is what makes transitions in your app just feel more alive. For example, it achieves that by giving animations a little overshoot effect. So that an animation is not just linear, but it overshoots a little bit, like a little bouncy effect. And these new motion physics are now already integrated in the Material 3 design components themselves. Then it brings a few changes to textiles, which you can see here. So this is, for example, the display large text, uh, which was already a textile from Material 3, the normal one. But the textile you see below here, that is on the one hand a little bit thicker, that has a little bit less letter spacing, that is a so-called emphasized textile that Material 3 Expressive adds. So for all these textiles, you maybe already know here from normal Material 3 design, body large, display large, and so on, all these now have emphasized equivalent. So an additional type of textile you can, but don't have to use, in order to just define an emphasized variant of that text. So this is also the display large textile here. But if we want to give a text with that textile specific emphasis, want to put specific focus on it, then we can define how that focus looks like, for example, by giving it a larger font weight and maybe decreasing the letter spacing a little bit to make it stand out more. And before I now show you all the new Material 3 components that this uh, expressive theme brings, because yes, there are some new cool components that we can now use, another change that it brings is, you can see, an extended shape library. If you've followed the look and feel of Android 16, then you know that Google heavily works with these new shapes in order to maybe group certain things based on context by giving them the same shape. And we can now use a new set here of, I think, 35 different shapes in Compose to give our components different kinds of looks that now have this Android 16-like look. But I think the coolest and biggest change here, apart from the motion physics of Material 3 Expressive, is the new set of components. So on the one hand, there are new UI components we can use and on the other hand, there are existing components that have been reworked a little bit and adjusted to this new theme. On the one hand, you can of course check this here on the Material 3 website, but I've actually prepared real samples of all the new components, not yet of all the components that have changed slightly that were already contained in Material 3, but of all those that are completely new and I want to show you what these are all about now. The first new component are so-called button groups. With button groups, well, as the name says, we can actually group buttons and make them selectable. That works via a single choice, like here, you can see these motion physics, these animations here, they are baked into these UI components already because that is what this new expressive theme is all about. So we get these fluent and vibrant animations here when selecting these buttons. 
But being able to group such buttons and having a single choice or a multi-choice that also works, that is what Material 3 Expressive now brings. Then Expressive brings two new types of progress indicators. So on the one hand, a circular one, as we already know, but it completely changes how it looks like, as well as a linear one. So with real progress. On the one hand, we can show the circular progress indicator here. You can see this uh, brings this new shapey, wavy, like uh, animation. Because yes, we can also optionally define a progress here for the circular progress indicator so that uh, the progress becomes full here and at 100% uh, it finishes. But we can also have such a linear progress indicator where this looks like this just in a linear fashion where you can also then pass in a progress value. Then new component is a so-called split button. So we have a button that enables us to on the one hand have a kind of a primary action like editing something. We can, you can also show an additional icon here. But it also comes with this kind of secondary button that Google uses a lot to maybe show an additional drop down menu here. Uh, I didn't implement this. But when clicking this, you can see on the one hand the shape changes. That is uh, what Expressive has in mind here with these new components that often when clicking these, you, you, you get animations for changing shapes, for moving things around to make everything feel more alive, emotional and fluid. And here you would need to imagine that a little drop down is uh, showing. And depending on what you've selected from the drop down, this primary action may be a different one, like create, edit or delete. And lastly, a new component are those so-called toolbars. So you can see we can now have such floating bars, which by the way also work vertically here. This is a horizontal one, obviously, where you have different types of options you can then select and click on, but you then also have a primary option which is represented as a floating action button. So these components here are all completely new, which didn't exist in the Material 3 design library in that way before. But as I mentioned, there are also quite some older components, existing components that have changed in some way that now just look a bit differently, feel a bit differently, have different animations. So if you want me to make videos about every single of these components individually, so you can then go through that and really understand how you can work with these in detail, what the best UX principles and best practices are for each component, then let me know that down below. These are obviously videos that take quite some while to record because there are a lot of these components that I would make dedicated videos about and that only makes sense if you would watch these. And other than that, in this video's description, you will find links to my more advanced Android and Kotlin multi-platform premium courses. Check these out if that is something you want to get into. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. See you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye. Thank you.